Well, um, I came up with the anti ferro looking for uh, a reset move of Juan Tamariz's. Uh, he had a, a move that I wanted to be able to, to get to that position and uh, that required to get cards to, uh, to separate, right? To separate. They didn't have to separate one by one, they just had to separate. And I thought long and hard and I finally thought that this action would do that. And I wasn't looking for a perfect one. But after using it for a few months, I realized, hey, I'm getting, I'm getting actually half of the deck uh, going one by one by one by one in the middle. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. It's, uh, it's difficult, but I do have some pointers that will make it a little bit easier and speed up the learning process by a few years. So again, if you look here and I separate, there's just one mistake at that end and uh, we have all the cards separated. If the anti ferro didn't have to be 100% perfect, there'd be a lot more applications for it. And some people are working just on that, that it's enough if you get like two thirds of the deck. Like my triumph. Right. Um, it doesn't make any sense. You might as well do so many other triumphs, but it's very, very interesting. So I'm glad, I'm glad. That. I'm very happy that there are guys like you who, despite my beliefs that it's a fairly useless move, are proving me wrong. That's very, very nice. I mean, it's a, uh, I just came up with it. I didn't see the potential of it, but it's very nice to see that there are guys out there who are willing to, to not only put their time and effort into it, but find it pleasant and come up with applications. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so that's a nice uh, lesson for all the move monkeys out there that say, um, you know, this is pointless. Maybe you can't find the point for it, but someone will, you know. That's a very good point. <laughs> I decided to actually come up with some tricks that didn't require you to do a perfect anti ferrule but use the anti ferrule almost as a part of the effect. So the idea of being able to unshuffle cards with this type of technique. It's a trick that actually works with the anti ferrule <laughs> <laughs> Very good ball. <laughs> Anyone who ever does this are bound to get mistakes. Uh, even if you found the most perfect, perfect deck, uh, you're bound to make a mistake or two. And uh, they're acceptable. They're okay. Um, if you know how you're going to correct them. For instance, uh, compared to the Pharaoh shuffle, if you make a mistake, you're going to have to take the, the cards back out and shuffle again. But in the anti Pharaoh, you can actually have the mistakes and then do the corrections. At the same time doing this. <laughs> oh my god. So, yeah, so one thing that I, I, I would want to, um, from what just learning from doing it, is that uh, I never knew how to fix the mistakes, right, until I met you. Uh, so I knew that. Uh, there was no option for it, I had to do it perfectly. So I tried to come up with ways of how I could get the bottom and the top, because that was giving me the most trouble. Um, so for the bottom one, I think what helps me, and you, you know, it's a very knacky move, so to each his own, I guess. Um, but what helped me 